Hi everyone, thank you for joining today's webinar on how to keep your data secure with ClearSwift and GoAnywhere MFT. If you have secure file transfer requirements between you and your customers or trading partners, we're going to dive into areas of frustration and how the GoAnywhere and ClearSwift solutions can help. We hope you find the presentation helpful. I'm here today with my co-hosts Dan Freeman and Scott Messick. How are you guys doing today? Excellent. Great. 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 Thanks a lot, Chris. Yep, you're welcome. Um, before we kick things off, I just want to remind you that the event is scheduled for an hour. And if you need to leave or drop off at any point, we are recording the event and we'll send out the link afterwards. Uh, feel free to ask any questions throughout the presentation and we'll have team members online to answer them. And we'll try to answer a few verbally at the end as well. Finally, a survey will display at the close of the presentation. If you feel that uh, that's suitable for you, we'll, uh, that will give us good feedback on what parts of the presentation were most helpful. And you can also reiterate any questions that uh, we didn't get to today in today's call, and someone will get back to you shortly. Okay, with that, uh, here's our agenda for today. We're going to review the issues revolving around secure file transfer and content inspection. Next, we'll get into an intro from Dan and Scott on what our respective tools do, followed by some real-world use cases. And lastly, we'll get into a live demo along with some Q&A at the end of the presentation. And with that, let me uh, introduce you to our presenters. Uh, Dan Freeman has spent the last 10 years of his career in various security roles, ranging from systems engineer to security officer. He currently serves as senior solutions consultant at Help Systems for the Go Anywhere product line. Scott Messick is a senior sales engineer with ClearSwift. In this role, he works with the largest ClearSwift customers and prospects across North and South America. Prior to joining ClearSwift, Scott spent 12 years with Credit Agricole Bank, where he last served as director over the Windows Platform Group. Thank you for being here. I'll let you take it away. All right, thanks, Chris. I appreciate that. And uh, thanks, everyone, for taking a little bit of your time out of the day to join Scott and I in this uh, discussion today on kind of data security. Um, some of the things when we talk about uh, security, I think uh, some common terms, uh, layered security or defense in depth. Uh, when we talk about using maybe multiple components or vendors, uh, mitigating security controls to protect that data. Well, today we're going to go ahead and focus on a couple applications and their integration on how to exercise overall data transfer security, data loss prevention, and mitigate any would-be viruses or malware. Now, encryption, when we talk about this, why is this not enough? Um, it's an interesting question. I think encryption is one of those things, especially from a security officer in my previous life, that we talk about is probably one of the first things you definitely should do when we talk about data security, having it encrypted at rest as well as in transfer. Uh, those are definitely absolutely key and necessary things. But getting back to that layered security or defense in depth, sometimes encryption by itself isn't enough. It's definitely a good starting point, but we got to do other things to make we make us have that defense in depth or layered security. So kind of a couple points there. Uh, your PII or PHI or FTI, basically anything, any individualized or sensitive information probably doesn't need to be or should not be allowed to be transmitted. Now, encrypting things uh, can definitely protect that data, but it's not going to go ahead and make sure that those things are not being transmitted. So we definitely want to make sure that we have Different things that we can do in DLP solutions, which we'll kind of talk about in a little bit, can definitely do that inspection of that to see what kind of contents are to either allow or disallow those types of files. A lot of times on that point too, we talk about it leaving the network, what we want to do, but think of it also from a perspective of receiving data. A lot of folks uh, that are receiving data don't have the proper secured network uh, in place to actually house PII, PHI, FTI, anything like that. That'd be another reason to do a little bit of scanning when files are actually coming into the network. Now, that next bullet point, 
we traditionally think of things going uh, inbound on this side. We definitely don't want to pull things in with viruses or malware to do that inspection before they actually land on our uh, ending place network. But this could also be on the outbound side as well. We don't want to be sending things to our partners that may have viruses or malware. It kind of gives you a, a bad look or maybe a little bit of bad reputation in that, in that case. Some of the other things, uh, we definitely want to know what we're being transmitted, kind of going to that bottom point as well, having the ability, ability to audit who is sending, um, things like that. If you guys are ever under any kind of compliance regulation, you know pretty well that when auditors do walk in the door, they are going to want to know that you know exactly what's happening with your files, where they're stored, uh, who's touching them, who's doing well with them, when they were sent, who's modifying them from what values to another, all those types of things, we definitely want to know what's going on. So we want to know what is going on with those files at any given time. And then also uh, being able to filter on who individuals, you might have maybe medical review nurses that, yeah, they're going to be dealing with PHI or PII, and they do need to send things out. But you also want to protect people that don't have any reason to be sending these things out. We can do that again, that content filtering to kind of see what files are going in and out and deny should they need to be or allow them to go through should they need to be. All right, um, some of the things, what's another way that we can add to the security model? We talked about encryption. Uh, well, here we're gonna talk a little bit about Go Anywhere and ClearSwift and how they can be integral pieces of that layered um, approach puzzle, if you will, as well as how they can integrate with one another. But first, let's take a peek at some reasons why you should, should consider centralized, secure, managed file transfer solutions. Here's just a couple quick bullet points. On the secure file exchange management, obviously encryption at rest and transfer. We kind of talked about that encryption piece is one very, very important and integral piece. I think it's actually a must have uh, for any kind of secure file exchange. We definitely can leverage ClearSwift for that deep file inspection for content and virus scanning as well. Scott will dive a little bit more into that when we get to his part as well. Centralized administration, I think this is key, not only just with uh, MFT, but anything. Uh, any any uh, sysadmin wants to have that single pane of glass to know where to go to kind of see what all his pieces are doing. Uh, this really helps with that auditing and accountability uh, point that we just talked about. Letting your auditors know, or when the auditors do walk in the door, you don't get that sweaty palm and you know heart racing type feeling because you have no idea how to find the information that that person's going to ask for. Having things centralized makes it a lot easier and having good logs as well makes things a lot easier. That full traceability and control. Uh, this is also kind of on that single pane of glass, single pane of control, I guess. Having those detailed audit trails of all that file movement, all the manipulations uh, to where you can keep track of anything that's going on, not only from so much just in auditing from an auditor's perspective, but having that idea of, hey, if a job fails, how do I get notified? Or can I stay proactive instead of reactive? All those types of things, letting, letting us know the actual life cycle of files from start to finish. And then automation, uh, we definitely, I don't know if you were on our previous webinar, but we talked about automation. Uh, obviously that's MFT's core, um, I guess, function. Uh, one of the biggest things, if you've ever looked at some of the data breaches over the last five years, one of the biggest reasons, if not the biggest reason, percentage-wise, uh, for causes of breaches is human error. Uh, automation gets rid of a lot of that human error, so that we don't rely upon people, you know, just maybe getting lazy, not seeing things. Uh, point is, the more you can automate, the more efficient it is, and probably more importantly nowadays, uh, the less likely you are to have one of those um, ugly data breaches that you kind of see on the news here and there. Okay, so this one here, I'm gonna run through this pretty quick. Uh, this is kind of a really high level overview of what kind of Go Anywhere does. Um, but from the uh, general perspective, uh, Go Anywhere can be on both the inbound and outbound side of things. Uh, so if you wanna be on an SFTP, FTP, uh, FTPS, an HTTPS web client, any type of listener, we can spin those up to where you can have, have your trading partners or customers connect up to you via those protocols to pick up or drop off files. Pretty straightforward. A lot of things with this, again, we do provide encryption, whether it's uh, during transfer using those protocols or at rest using AES-256 type in encryption. We can have that data at rest as well. A lot of different things from maybe a data translation standpoint. You need to look at certain files, manipulate them, and actually enter them into a database. Lots of different things as well. 
Some of the different things that we're going to talk about here too is we're going to talk a little bit about the outbound piece of it, uh, specifically when we get to Scott's section on ICAP and the Clear Swift product. This is where when we talk about uh, us being on the client side or doing outbound type connections or initiating, this entire box down here is just a sample set of what Go Anywhere calls resources. And this is us giving you the ability to put in server and service type connection information to leverage things like Clear Swift or maybe a backend database, or maybe you want to connect to Amazon S3 buckets or Azure Blob Storage. Point being, now Go Anywhere can use those to reach out, dip into, pull things, push things to, or leverage, in our case, um, services so that we can do some DLP type scanning or antivirus and malware type scanning either before we're receiving files or when we're sending files outbound to our partners. So lots of different things. And then really quickly, uh, talking about the audit logs and reporting and alerting, this is also built in and very, very integral when we talk about that aud the uh, um, auditing and accountability section, which is going to be very important for any security re regulation, no matter what um, field uh, you're in. This is where the detailed audit logs, giving new audit logs on the protocols, on the people logging into you, your actual administrative users, any file that touches the MFT system, all those things can be audited and alerted on so that you can stay proactive uh, as best that you can instead of that reactive type mode and, and having people tell you something didn't work and things like that. So this can keep you on track to ensure the delivery of said resources should you need to do that. All right, I'm gonna pass the mic here, kind of jump over here and send it over to Scott. Scott, you there? I am here. Thanks, Dan, and uh, thanks, Chris. Uh, great intro to the webinar, and uh, thanks, Dan, for outlining the basics, um, covering uh, various topics that we're gonna be getting into here. And uh, also, thanks to everybody for joining. So uh, a couple of bullet points that we're going to get into here um, to begin with, uh, as far as ClearSlip is concerned, uh, rich track record, excuse me, rich track record in innovation, developing many of the features the security industry now considers standard um, uh, during collaboration, such as deep content inspection um, or DCI, as you'll commonly you know, hear me refer to this as. Uh, and so what I'll get into, uh, what DCI stands for, Deep Content Inspection. So a couple of different things, um, inbound and outbound scanning, um, focusing, uh, Dan had focused on the outbound. Um, we're going to, we can cover both, you know, inbound as well as outbound <clears throat> across multiple communication channels. So uh, our focus topic for today is, of course, go anywhere. But in addition, we'll get into some basics as far as uh, email and other web traffic is concerned. Uh, DCI also refers to what we commonly uh, call adaptive redaction. Uh, and what do we mean by adaptive redaction is our ClearSwift special sauce, if you will, redaction of text, whether it's PCI or PII, um, while allowing everything else to pass through the gateways, um, we can just um, essentially uh, look for and take out the stuff that's important to you. Uh, DCI also refers to optical character recognition, scanning for text inside of images, uh, Anti-steganography um, uh, is also another form of our deep content inspection en uh, engine, which is the concealing of messages inside of images. Uh, DCI also refers to the ability to strip document metadata, such as change tracking, authors, and, and things along these lines. ClearSwift also gives you the ability to monitor what truly matters to your organization, which of course may be different from one organization to another. Uh, or even between business units uh, uh, or desperate companies inside uh, operating under a corporate or a global umbrella. If you'll, Dan, you can move to the next slide and we'll, um, we'll go into a little bit more of ClearSwift's holistic approach. Uh, so as I previously mentioned, we talked uh, about the DCI methodology, uh, which we can apply to email, um, which happens to be our flag flagship product, uh, web traffic and endpoint devices. And with our endpoint solution, we can essentially apply all the same logic to um, uh, data at rest as well, such as file shares. <clears throat> we can also classify data and monitor sense of data uh, being transmitted both internally and externally with our data classification tools. 
first. However, uh, as Dan uh, previously mentioned, the intent of this webinar is to focus specifically on our integration with Go Anywhere, which allows for ClearSwift and help systems to ensure that the data that you have visibility into that's on your network and it's most sensitive to you uh, can be tracked um, when transmitting within the Go Anywhere FTP, uh, excuse me, MFT platform. <coughs> So a little bit more about uh, Go Anywhere and ClearSwift and how we work together. As you can see here, you have the modern managed file transfer solution, which is easy to support, maintain, and can be built for many use cases, whether it's internal or public facing. Uh, we take that and we incorporate the deep content inspection algorithm into the product, and now we can protect against malicious content or specific types of data which you prefer not to allow to be transmitted within your MFT work environment. So what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate shortly how we can kind of tie all of this together. <clears throat> Next slide, we're going to um, just outline a little bit more about how the ClearSwift uh, product offering, the ICAP gateway, seamlessly integrates with the Go Anywhere MFT product, uh, how we can inspect all of the content that's sent into and out of the portal. Uh, and so this diagram that's been um, presented here just kind of outlines from 50,000 feet how this is all done. You have your Go Anywhere managed file transfer solution, you have your ICAP gateway via the ICAP protocol, we intercept the traffic that's uploaded and downloaded uh, as it applies to specific groups of users or individual users. Different business rules can be defined for different use cases as well. Um, <clears throat> the ICAP integration kicks in via workflows and triggers. It's sent to the ICAP gateway. We scan the content with our deep content inspection engine and we pass the results back to go anywhere. Um, and, and there's a variety of different things that, um, that we can do within the Go Anywhere platform. As you can see when we get into the uh, presentation, we'll get into that in a little bit more detail, the actual live demo. So on the next slide, I kick that back to you, Dan. Yeah, I'll jump in here. Thanks, Scott. Um, so this one here is, is a little bit of, I guess, stroking the Go Anywhere ego here. Uh, this came out in obviously 2019. You can see there at the top of the Infotech MFT data quadrant. Um, and if you guys have ever followed, uh, I know it's kind of a niche market for the managed file transfer area. Uh, analysts and third-party reports have, haven't always been easy to find. Um, while some file sharing products call themselves MFT solutions, many of them do lack the security controls and detailed audit trails for compliance requirements. File transfer, encryption, automation, and auditing are all qualities of the standard MF tool, MFT tool, centralized obviously in that single pane of glass that we talked about, with the need for this type of solution growing in leading organizations. Now, Infotech Research Group released this 2019 managed file transfer category report, uh, which scores leading vendors based on computer or customer reviews. Now, among nine vendors listed in the MFT data quadrant, including Ipswich Move It and IBM MFT, Go Anywhere MFT had the highest composite satisfaction score ranked number one for multiple vendor capabilities and features so obviously that's pretty cool uh, we like to talk about that and i don't know if you guys have ever seen the the gardner data quadrants this should look pretty familiar to to you the upper right hand corners are going to signify the leaders in that space so it's kind of nice that we're up there at the top so yeah you can see for yourself in the um uh, on our website if you want to download it at uh, www.goanywhere.com forward slash info dash tech yeah, many buyers have found this really a nice, helpful part of the research process and a good way to validate uh, vendor claims. Because I know sometimes when people do get into the MFT space, it's kind of unknown, uh, especially when you're a sysadmin. It may not be something that you're too familiar with. So this is definitely a decent starting spot. I don't think it's an end-all, be-all by any means. Um, but uh, I think it's definitely a, a, a good note for us, of course, and then I think a, a great place to at least take a peek and if you want to uh, pull it down, do a little demo, you can do a little uh, proof of concepts and see how that works for you guys. With that, I'll pass it back to you, Scott. Yep, so uh, some little more ego stroking here for ClearSwift, a little pat on the back. Uh, as you can see here, we are on the Gartner Magic Quadrant for Enterprise Data Loss Prevention. We've also been recognized by SC Magazine, and there are a couple of links on the bottom of this slide which reference our awards and our case studies. 
one comment I'd like to make that pertains to the quote that you see in the middle of the slide has to do, uh, comes from one of our customers on uh, published in one of our case studies on our website, it has to do with deep content inspection. Um, just a, a point that I'd like to make here is it's a little more than just um, redacting sensitive information. Um, ClearSwift, when using ClearSwift products, we can significantly reduce false positives um, due to the way that our, uh, our lexical expression algorithms are put together and a lot of the uh, flexibility and granularity that can be unleashed when you're looking for information that's sensitive to you and your organization. Um, so what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna go into a current configuration where we have a Go Anywhere MFT along with a ClearSwift ICAP gateway. Um, you've got the Go Anywhere piece, as Dan uh, mentioned, that does the secure file transfer, and then you've got the ClearSwift piece that does the deep content inspection or does the interception of traffic between um, uh, the, the file uploads and downloads. So what you have here is you have, um, you've got um, <clears throat> traffic between group, specific groups of individuals. These groups have DLP and other custom requirements doesn't necessarily apply to the entire organization, um, but for these specific users, there were granular controls that were necessary to be put in place. Uh, and what the ICAP gateway does is we provide, as I've been mentioning, the deep content inspection or the DCI and returns the results back to the Go Anywhere platform. If the ICAP gateway can sanitize the message, for instance, redact text, um, uh, block specific content, then the uh, transmission is allowed to continue. Uh, if ClearSwift, for whatever reason, um, can't redact text or if there's um, executables that are being transferred that can't be renamed, uh, if there's any scripts that can't be removed, things along these lines, viruses, um, what ClearSwift does is we kick the error code back to the Go Anywhere MFT platform and the transmission is blocked. So, uh, with that being said, uh, I think it's time for us to actually show all of this uh, live uh, and in use. So, uh, if you can take a step back, I think there was one more slide that I wanted to um, review, which has to do with, um, oh, okay. So that's okay. Um, what we're going to do is I'm going to analyze. You can move back to your, your demo environment. What we're going to do is we're going to run through a couple of different use cases here, uh, test scenarios. One is we're going to show a demonstration of a block. Um, the next um, demonstration we're going to do is uh, redaction of text. So the blocking is essentially not allowing the communication. Redaction allows the communication but strips out the sensitive information. We're going to do this with a secure file. Um, platform uh, and, and then what we're going to do is we're going to demonstrate the secure email um, functionality of the product as well. Uh, we'll go through some of the workflows both within ClearSwift as well as Go Anywhere. So um, what we're going to do is Dan's going to do the driving and I'm going to do the narrating. So uh, without further ado, Dan, can you move into the first test case which we'd like to review the Go Anywhere workflow? We'll start with the um, we'll start with the block user case. So what Dan's going to do is he's going to sign into uh, as his block user uh, and what he's going to do is he's going to first show us some sample PDF and uh, Word documents that we have that have uh, been rebranded with our organization. You can see here there's some uh, PCI that's about to be transmitted. We have a Word document. Uh, we have a PDF. So we'll start with the Word document. Dan's going to go ahead and upload that into the console, and once we click the refresh, you'll see there that the document has been blocked because it's got a PCI that's built into it. So now what we're going to do is he's going to quickly demonstrate how he can do the same thing with the with a PDF file as well as with a uh, JPEG. And so while he's doing that, he's going to going to show that that you could see the content there same document that's been saved as a PDF file and then you've got the image which is coming next he's going to refresh that and you'll see that that content is not allowed to be transmitted so for this specific user um, this is PCI uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to also demonstrate another use case where we're going to see PII 
And so all this has been blocked. And if you don't mind, Dan, could you just kind of show us and speak to us about the basics uh, for the workflow itself within Go Anywhere? Yeah, let's do that real quick. So as Scott just mentioned, we just went and we dragged a Word PDF and a um, JPEG file with uh, sensitive information and his rule decided to block it. So let's go ahead and look at the actual completed job first. So we'll kind of see the log file to see exactly what happened there. Let's refresh here and we'll look, make sure 1023, yep, that was the one we just did. So if we look at the log file within here, we'll kind of see, and this one looked like it was that credit card info doc file that we uploaded. You'll see that it's calling a project and we'll go a little bit more into this uh, in just a little bit on the actual trigger and project process. But I'll just kind of show you what happened in the back end. This is gonna do the ICAP request goes through the ICAP and it's gonna return a status code of 200, which is bad. And we'll again, we'll go more into that when we get in the project. So what we're doing in this one, we're just deleting the actual file. Um, now granted, we could do other things. Maybe we could archive it into a certain location and then delete it from the user location. But for our intents and purposes, just to kind of show you the functionality, we just went ahead and deleted the file. And that's why you were seeing on the web client when I refreshed, the file actually disappeared. So that's actually what's going on on the background. Now that was for the doc file. It's gonna be the same for the PDF, the JPEG uh, that we uploaded as well. Same concept, it's gonna uh, go ahead. Just wanted to demonstrate that it can scan docs, PDFs, as well as, uh, like Scott mentioned earlier, the OCR technology, that was with the JPEG. So it could actually scan picture files as well, which is pretty awesome, pretty cool uh, feature there. With that, okay. Scott, I don't know if you want to. Go ahead. Yep, yep, great. So now um, one last uh, part that we're going to demonstrate here is we've got a sample virus on the system. It's not an actual virus. Um, we basically named this uh, CryptoLocker, I believe. And so uh, what we've done here is um, we've just placed some text inside of this text file to make it look and feel like it's a virus. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to upload that into the uh, Go Anywhere MFT console, and you'll see here that if we refresh that, you'll see that that's been stripped out. So we've essentially, uh, we're, we're, we're blocking malicious uh, content as well. <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do is um, we're going to go ahead and move over to the ClearSwift gateway, uh, and we're gonna have a look at, uh, as you can see here, you see the blocks that are coming in. So basically you can see who the sender was, um, the route, uh, that's, that's, that's our terminology that describes the sender and the recipient, um, and some uh, rules that are in the route that basically uh, it move into the PCI blocking. So what we're gonna do um, is we're gonna move over to the redact uh, use case where we're essentially allowing the communication to continue um, we have a, a different user account here. This is a different business unit, if you will. Uh, and then what we're gonna do is we'll, we'll transmit some data here, and then we're gonna dig into a little deeper into the rule sets as well. So let's go ahead and just show the files first, Dan, just so you can see it's, uh, so this is PII. Uh, first set of rules were PCI. And that was for our block user, block use case. So Dan went ahead and uploaded the social security JPEG. Now, if we open this up, what we should find is that the content is redacted. So as you can see here, we blocked out the, uh, the PII, uh, and this is based upon analytics that we built into our rule set. Um, so uh, ClearSwift customers, you'll, you'll recognize this because you've seen this with the email gateway. Now we're applying this to the Go Anywhere platform. So go ahead and uh, upload a doc file. And you'll see the same result here where we've, at, we've redacted the uh, PII that's inside of this, um, this uh, job application document. And then the last thing is the PDF. Oh, oh so sorry, yep, he showed the original file, which I was actually just gonna ask him for him to do. So great, so now we open this up, same concept, we should see the redacted text inside of the PDF, which is as our, that's, that's what we're expecting. So um, now what we're gonna do is we're just going to quickly move over to the ClearSwift gateway and uh, Dan's gonna move into the policy management uh, and then he's gonna go into the lexical expressions. And we're gonna show you 
you scroll down there and you'll see the redaction of the social security info we open that up and you'll see here that what we're doing is is we're looking for the word social security with a space and then we're referencing the social security pattern of numbers um, this is a built-in canned expression that comes with the clear swift solution or we can build our own custom analytics as well so now uh, if we cancel that and then at the top of this expression click inside of that uh, redact social security and this refers us to the content rule where we're matching the expression we're looking basically everywhere in the document uh, we don't have to this can be customized um, we've enabled the optical character recognition feature uh, and when I say we don't have to search everywhere we could just search content or properties metadata uh, and as you can see here we're allowing this on successful redactions so for the standard block rule what you'll just see here is a block action um, and so <clears throat> Dan if you don't mind can you now uh, as you could see once we take that we assign it to a route and, and then we build the rules inside of the route but um, so Dan is just going to demonstrate that for us really quickly. So if we go into the routes, and then what we're going to do is we're just going to open up uh, the redact, and we'll go into there. And you'll see here for this use case, uh, if you scroll down, there is just one um, PII rule that's at the bottom. And for the block, it was the PCI rule. And so uh, if you don't mind, Dan, can you just quickly show us the workflow? I believe you went into the logs before. So could you just kind of show us the workflow uh, and some of the actions that are inside of um, one of the, the, the PCI or the PCI? Ah, yes. Let's do that real quick. Okay, so let's go to, yep, let's go here on the redact one. So yes, really quickly, uh, not to get terribly in the weeds here, but like Scott mentioned, what we're doing from a go anywhere perspective is we're going to notify or get notified when a file does get uploaded. As you guys saw, we're doing it via web client here. This is just one of the ways we can do this. One of the protocols, it happens to be the HTTPS protocol that we're having folks upload files to. So we're going to have a trigger that's looking for that the action item first, a file that gets uploaded via HTTPS. When that happens and it's a certain type of file, we're going to call a project and that's what this is here. This is what you're looking at here. This is going to go through and we're developing some sort of business logic, which is going to be step by step functions or action items, I should say, to do something. In this case, we're actually going to be connecting up to that ICAP resource, which is going to be our clear swift device that we have here. Um, I know I briefly talked about the resources on that overall slide. Well, that's something that you'll define, the actual clear swift connection first as a resource, and then you can actually leverage that. The main point is we're going to send that information, in this case, those files we're uploading, to that ICAP um, device, and it's going to go through everything that Scott just kind of walked you through, and I realized that was really quick, uh, but depending upon the type of file, who's actually sending it in this case, in this case, it was the redact user, that's what we're looking at here. Since it came from Redact, it's going to call this project, and we're really going to have ICAP analyze that file and basically give us back a, a status code. And depending upon that status code is what we're actually going to do as far as you know, moving it or deleting it and then denying the actual trigger event, meaning we're not going to let that actually happen, that file transfer happen. But this is the main part of it, is taking that uh, status code that we're getting from the ICAP device and then doing something as far as whatever logic we want to do with those files, depending upon that response. Yep, great, so thanks a lot. So um, there's just one more item that we want to demonstrate here, which is the secure mail functionality. Uh, and what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to review the same um, block uh, use case. So Dan's going to go ahead and sign in and he's going to send an email. And what we're going to do is we're after PCI again here, which we don't want to allow. And so what we're going to do is he's going to send an email uh, and we're going to, going to include some PCI. We've got the PDF, the Microsoft Word, and the JPEG to demonstrate the OCR technology again. So he's going to go ahead. He's going to open up the same set of documents and you'll see the, um, you'll see the same content that's inside of them. And he, once he sends the message, um, what, the, what we'll see here is that when the email is received by the recipient, 
um, we're going to get a um, we're going to get a notification saying that there was um, sensitive information that was not allowed to be delivered. Um, and the bottom line here is this is it's, it's it's a very generic error that we're kicking back for the time being, but this can be customized and tweaked, and we could really put whatever we want in here. For any of you that are on the call that have seen um, Clear Swift uh, notifications before, they're they're flexible and customizable, and it's it's similar logic that can be built into this workflow here. So um, we've got the the PDF, the Microsoft Word, and again the JPEG functionality is, is all fully supported within the secure email uh, portal as well. <clears throat> so it looks like Dan is going to show us one more use case here with the PDF. We've actually got two more, the PDF as well as the JPEG. Yeah, we'll pull them And he's going to go there. ahead and he's going to send the uh, the message through the system if I can spell and there we go yep so you'll see a similar um, message that's been presented within his email client and uh, same same concept here where we've got a, um, a generic message that's kicked back saying that uh, we're not allowing this communication because there's some sensitive content inside of it so with that being said, we went through um, we went through the the block using the secure files uh, technology. Uh, that's that's our one business unit or our one use case uh, covering PCI. We went through a redaction um, configuration where we've got a different set of users where we want to allow the communication, um, but we just want to strip out the sensitive text, and that was PII. Uh, and then we've got the secure email uh, component where, again, we've moved back to PCI and it's a different group of users that uh, we want to control within the secure email platform. And you can see here, as Dan is demonstrating, within the Clear Swift uh, ICAP gateway, you can see the message that came through and um, some basic information about you know, what Clear Swift did with it and, and what Clear Swift sent back to the Go Anywhere platform. Cool. And then to tie that into just really quick, I know we showed you kind of the project code here or the project um, uh, steps on what's actually happening, uh, but how we're even getting here. I know we mentioned those triggers. Let's just quickly pull those up uh, really fast. Uh, triggers, uh, first, if I take a step back, is going to be any kind of action item that your web users are going to do. And web users are just those folks that you're creating in Go Anywhere to log into Go Anywhere to leverage whatever service it is. We happen to use the HTTPS web client. It could be SFTP, FTPS, FTP, things like that. We just happen to use the web client just for, I think, visual sake. Point being is, um, starting with the first one, there's an upload successful trigger. So if I go all the way down to the bottom, we'll see these two triggers here, which is basically doing, hey, you know what? If, if a file gets uploaded successfully, we don't care what service, we could have chose just HTTPS. But the main point is, I want to say, if a file gets uploaded successfully by this user redact, I want to, in this case, I'm calling a project, and that's that project we just went through. So it's going to pass in a few variables, the actual physical file, where it's coming from, the user that's passing it up there, the file name, things like that, that could be used within the project. We're pretty much just using the actual file name itself. Uh, to do that um, uh, processing to go through there. But that's where this is coming from. So when I dr drag or drug that file into that uh, uh, web interface using the redact user, it called this trigger, which called that project to do the processing, sending the file to ICAP, getting the response back, and then doing the logic that I had in the project. Very similarly, but kind of the other way, this was kind of inbound. On the other way, we had that trigger for the email and that one's actually doing before you send. So there's a before secure mail send trigger. And that one is here. And this one's doing pretty much kind of the same thing. Uh, this one's saying, hey, that's why I logged in as D Freeman. I have it specific to D Freeman. You can obviously choose whatever users you want, or it could just be the entire domain if you want this to happen for everybody. But if D Freeman sends a secure mail, I want to call this project first, which is the secure mail block and notify. And it's doing kind of the same things. We're taking apart the variables that we have available to us, which by the way, you can click on this and get the actual variables that you have available at your discretion to pass into the project. But for the most part, we're passing in the attachments, looping through them, seeing, passing those ICAP, getting the response code back, and then deciding, hey, do I want to deny this trigger? Which means, nope, it's not going. And then I send an email back saying, hey, by the way, 
your message was denied. Or if it's okay, if I get a 204 status code from, from ClearSwift, then I'm gonna say, okay, great. Let's go ahead and pass that email through and on it goes. So those are kind of where that project logic is coming from. It's coming from those events that those web users in our case were either uploading files to the web client or actually sending a secure mail out with those two different types of triggers. In any case, uh, Scott, did you have anything else you wanted to cover? We want to pass this back to Chris. No, you did a uh, fantastic job there, kind of setting the tone um, at the beginning of the webinar and, and kind of wrapping up um, the technical pieces there at the end. Um, and yeah, so so thanks a lot for that. No additional comments. Cool. All right, Great. Chris. Yep. Thank you, guys. Um, we'll have time for a live Q and A in a minute. But before that, I just wanted to thank you for joining us today and let you know we'd be happy to answer any questions you have if you'd like to contact us. Our information is on the screen, as well as the websites where you can learn more about either Go Anywhere or ClearSwift, request a demo, or try the software yourself. For those of you who need to drop off or already have had your answers or your questions answered, uh, thanks for joining. We hope you have a great day. For the rest of you who are sticking around, if you'd like to submit a question for Dan or Scott to answer, you can do that through the question pane in the bottom right of your screen, and we'll watch for those to come through. Um, so uh, we did have a couple of questions that did come through during the uh, broadcast. Uh, one of them was from an existing Go Anywhere customer who is using uh, secure forms along with the Go Anywhere gateway. And uh, the question was basically, would the addition of ClearSwift provide a real-time virus scan that could reject any documents that contain a virus? And the response, of course, was yes. Uh, the ClearSwift ICAP gateway uh, offers real-time virus scanning with really any choice of a variety of uh, AV clients. So um, that was a great response. Um, you can also use a variety of AVs, so it's not just limited to one antivirus product. Um, we did have another question uh, that came through regarding uh, the native command and go anywhere. Uh, a customer said, was basically asking if, if they're using a, a local antivirus client, can't they just call a native command in a workflow to do that? And of course, the answer of that to that is yes as well. Um, you can scan at using an endpoint uh, antivirus tool, um, but you know, the, I think the point of this webinar is that um, it, you would be lacking in any of the content inspection capabilities that ClearSwift is providing. So any kind of uh, adaptive redaction or content blocking, you wouldn't get with just a an antivirus client. And uh, with that, I don't see any other questions. Um, we appreciate your time today. I'll, I'll give us one more minute. If you do want to ask another question, we'll be sitting here and monitoring. And, yeah, so just uh, um, thing I, to, uh, yeah, I'm uh, sorry, go ahead, Chris. No, I was just going to mention, uh, if you are a Go Anywhere customer, I wanted to remind you of our customer community, Go Anywhere Insiders. Uh, it's new this year. We have over 500 customers who have joined. It's a great place to get product education, interact with other Go Anywhere users, and earn points to redeem uh, for cool prizes. If you haven't already registered, it's easy and free. Just go to insiders.goanywhere.com forward slash join and enter the code GA insiders to get started and Scott go ahead you had another point to make yep so a uh, good question about the antivirus um, so a couple, couple of questions there the, the first thing is um, with respect to the, the the types of antivirus so clear swift supports three different engines of era Kaspersky as well as Sophos uh, and to, uh, to for the second question um, it's also uh, good to have uh, different levels of protection. So you may have a different uh, antivirus provider at the desktop or at the server level. And, and what ClearSwift allows for you to do is to incorporate um, a, a, an additional 
product um, to use against uh, to use against threats and, and things along those lines. So Avira, Kaspersky, and Sophos. That's a great point, and I'm assuming that's pretty common with what you see on the ClearSwift side, customers using multiple uh, antivirus solutions. Yep, uh, we've seen, you know, and, and, and uh, prior to, to ClearSwift as well, uh, what I've seen with my background is uh, desktop AV is typically one product, server AV is another product, um, and your messaging AV uh, is, is oftentimes a third product. So that's fairly common in the, um, in the industry, especially for medium and larger scale organizations to, to be diversified like that. Sure, makes sense. I think that's all we have today. We appreciate uh, you attending, and uh, if you uh, if you want to see this again, we'll be sending out a link. We appreciate your time today. Thank you, everybody. Thanks, guys. Thank you.